Hello. Uh, I'm Chris Van Beek. I'm one of the homegrown folks that Grady was talking about. I'm a Knoxville native. Uh, I've, I co-founded a company with my partner, Brian Strong, called Vendor Registry. Um, and our vision is, is really to create stronger cities, schools, communities through simplified purchasing. Um, and we do this through a marketplace that makes the $300 billion in local spend more accessible and easier for both the governments and their vendors. So vendors win more business, get paid faster. Governments save a sick amount of time and, and cost money that they can reinvest into their communities. And so we're now over 300 governments across 22 states. Uh, they have about a $3 billion annual spend uh, and 45,000 vendors across the, the U.S. and, and Canada. Um, they really know our customers well. We've been doing this for a while, so we have an over a 95% retention rate with our governments. So in deep with them, and then they in turn mandate their vendors to use our platform. So ultimately, it's our network and our data standards that drive significant transactional efficiencies. And so what you'll see over the next 12 months uh, are governments being able to buy off each other's contracts to save a massive amount of time and expense, uh, and then also a vastly improved cash flow for vendors, especially the SMB market. Uh, and then by layering on these transactional revenues on top of our SaaS platform, we're increasing our, our potential by a factor of, of 10x. And so governments will be purchasing differently in the next five years. We'll be doing it this way far more cooperatively. And it'll be done over one platform that can standardize workflow and data, and that's, that's vendor registry. Um, so a little bit about our fundraising. Yeah. Uh, we, we, got, we got lucky early on. We, we had a, an equity partner who helped us develop our, and I, I wouldn't call it V1, it was more like an alpha, um, uh, for equity. We since have bought them out. Uh, and then also had a small line of credit with one of our, our co-founders. And so we were able to bootstrap a while, and then we had a large contract with a customer uh, that also funded us for a little while. And that was great, because we learned a lot of stuff, made a lot of mistakes without sacrificing equity, which, which is huge. So uh, we got started a little later in our fundraising, so we were really in year three before we raised our first seed round. And we raised about $1.8 million from primarily angels and, and early stage uh, uh, capital, like CRF, uh, and Lighthouse Fund here in Knoxville. Um, and um, uh, that was in 2016, the end of 2016. And then right now we are currently closing in on a, a bridge round to get us to our first institutional round uh, later this year. And as, uh, as CEO, a lot of that work was yours, maybe most of it. So, how how long did you spend on that on that process, and how much of how much of each day? Because it's a it's a huge commitment. Oh yeah, and and that's um, and I'm very fortunate. I've got a very capable co-founder, Brian Strong, and so we were able uh, to really divide and conquer. And so I think that's one of my takeaways from fundraising is being able to um, a very you know, a division of labor, if you will. So you really need a strong co-founder or a strong management team to take a lot of day-to-day -day responsibilities because fundraising truly is a, a full-time job. It, I should say, if you want to do it well <laughs> or successfully, it really is a full-time. And so uh, and it always takes longer than you think. And so the, the seed round, first money came in March of 16, last money December. So it took all of nine months to get that done. Um, one of the other takeaways um, is we thought, at least I thought I was done at least twice in that process. And so that kind of made the process longer. And so one of my takeaways is always be putting in prospects in the top of the funnel. Um, because with angel investing, um, it, you're talking often with other entrepreneurs, other business leaders. They're really attracted to... Uh, your energy and your story and your potential and so it's relatively easy to get it to a yes really hard to get to a check and so so you think you're there uh, and you're not and then once you do get the check it's probably half of what they thought they would do uh, and so it just takes longer 
<laughs> yeah. Are you finding, because we talked a little bit about uh, bridge before, follow-on financing, yeah. is some of the bridge coming for all of it coming from previous investors, or how much of it are you looking hey, for you, outside I, investors I, I, yeah, to I'm, add I'm, on? I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that most of our bridge is coming from existing investors, which is great. We did pull on um, some, some new investors as well. Um, and so that's part of that whole keep putting investors in the top of your funnel and working through that. Um, I think there are a couple of takeaways on angel investing. I'm sure there are lots of others that will may, may uh, refute this, but in my, my, my empirical data, if you will, is um, it is it, it's definitely relationships, and so start those early. Uh, so you want to build those over time. Um, but also what I found was interesting is there's some code. I'm, I'm not an angel investor yet, but there's some code about whoever brings you to the table as another investor, you can't invest any more or less than that person. And so if a $25,000 investor introduces you to another, uh, she'll turn to you know, her coach and said, how much are you in for? 25, okay, I'll put in 25. This could be a billionaire, it happened to me, right? I went to a billionaire, I, my first time, I thought I was done, got the billionaire, he put in 50, because his, the, guy, the guy brought it to him, put in 50. Whereas another example, I had a guy that put in 100, and 20 minutes into breakfast, he turns to his buddy and says, how much are you in for? 100, okay, I'll put in 100 within 20 minutes. And so it, it's it, this code. So if you have the opportunity, get the higher level investors to refer other investors. So um, that, that's my takeaways. Easy to get to yes, hard to get the check. <laughs> Talk to the higher level investors, they'll always match. Those yeah, are yeah. Two, big, two big takeaways. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. So.